so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista nese and this is nezareel so in the crazy week that was we had singer cora obidi in the news i believe that we all know cora right but just a brief recap very brief cora is a nigerian singer and dancer from delta state she is based in the united states and she loves to dance in fact, she has been featured on international stage when she was a contestant in 2009 in the American talent show So You Think You Can Dance. She got married to an American chiropractor, Justin Dean, and they got married in 2017. They have two amazing daughters together. Five years after their marriage and just one week, after their second daughter was born. Justin Dean took to his Instagram page to announce abruptly that they were getting a divorce. More like he was leaving Cora. I didn't work out, he worked out on me. And for all of you who are supporting that man, may you fall hopelessly in love with a man who will work out on you four days postpartum, who will tarnish your reputation online, who will steal from you. May you fall hopelessly in love with somebody that you gave two kids and may they do that to you keep up and send you homeless and tell you move out then you go and you move you're looking for how to move with two kids in your car in a country you've never you did not grow up in in a country you know nothing about may you fall in love with a man like that the truth is that a lot of people thought that this was a publicity stunt especially for the fact that at that time Cora had just released the book, so we thought that they were trying to drive engagement and traffic for people to get awareness of her new product. But we were wrong. As time went on, it became clearer and clearer that truly, the marriage between Cora Obidi and Justin Dean was indeed strained. Uh, Why well, I divorced Cora? I divorced Cora because we got into an argument. Cora says things to hurt me sometimes, and she repeatedly told me that she regretted June ever being born. Sadly, everybody's divorce doesn't turn out as amicable as Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony. Justin and Cora's divorce came with plenty of bass bows and kitty kitty kata kata. Justin would constantly take to social media to bash Cora, accusing her of being irresponsible and unfit to raise his daughters, more like their daughters. Cora would also drag him and call him out online for failing to pay child support and contribute to his daughter's education. It was messy, a potopoto situation. Healthcare, nothing. Food, nothing. Upkeep, nothing. I'm asking for nothing. All I'm asking for is for you to pay your own half because all of me is too much. You go choke. This fight, you no know, go fee end. You no know, go fee end like that. While Cora enjoys friendship from many people scattered across the world for her bold and audacious nature, some people have not hesitated to express their love for her for being so wild, always being naked, and posing a bad example to other women. So on the 11th of April 2024, in the crazy week that was, Cora was on Instagram live chatting with her fans. She had gone to the UK for one project or the other and she was just about exiting her Airbnb located at Westminster in London. And all of a sudden, this happened. Oh my God, it scared me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Whatever I did to you, I'm sorry. Whatever I did to you, I'm sorry. Whatever I did to you. Whatever I did to you, I'm sorry. According to Cora, she had just faced an acid and knife attack and then she shared a video of herself using coca-cola to wash off the you know the painful sting of the acid and people were like ah uh ah -uh, acid care hey baby girl this face that we are seeing does not look like acid attack oh acid melts real time now as in it starts eating into the into the dermis and the epidermis but what we are seeing on your face is just tears and you know some sweat and kata what is going on she went further to post this currently in an ambulance to the hospital there was a knife and acid attack on me. There's been a lot of hate in the past, but this physical assault 
is a wake-up call. If you have any information as to the attacker, black female, five foot, please forward to Quora Management at gmail.com. Her sister also took to Instagram to raise alarm and give updates as to the knife and acid attack on her sister. When Cora got to the hospital, once again, she updated her fans. She said, Guys, I'm in the hospital. Safety with travel is no longer a luxury, but necessity. The acid was salicylic, and I was lucky. Love you guys. And the internet people rules were like, Eh hey, hey, now you are talking Cora. This cannot be real acid because if it is real acid, you won't even have eye. They'll be positioning camera in perfect positions and be doing live stream video. You won't even have mouth to come and be saying, I've been better with acid with no single dent on your face. Acid is very dangerous. It eats into the skin real time immediately and starts to melt your face and disfigure you. Eh? They were like, Cora, when you looked into the mirror and you said that nothing was wrong with your face, why did you still come and start saying that it is acid attack? Don't you know what acid bath looks like? And you could still be updating your fans on social media minute by minute with acid attack they were like hey now you are talking it is saligini salicis look salisostic not the real acid they were like thank god for your life my dear sister these fans eh these haters eh what will somebody not see in public eye how can you detest somebody so much someone that has not done anything to you before has not hurt you has not insulted you has not offended you you the person so much that you start tracing the person to the person's hotel to start stabbing the person and pouring something on the person this celebrity life is not funny oh people should be very careful so they went ahead sympathizing with cora and wishing her well and you know all of that until her husband, <laughs> her ex-husband Justin Dean got wind of the news and jumped into the matter. As always, Justin Zukwani K. Justin Zukwani K. Every time this your ex Cora is in the news, you must choke mouth put. You must have your own theory and your own opinion. You must have something to say. But Justin Dean said this. A common tactic among celebrities to stay relevant is to stage robberies, assault, or anything else to drum up the views. This has gone too far. <laughs> Justin Zukwani K. Justin Zukwani K. He went further, undeterred. He said, Not the first time that she has done something like this. Be a good role model to our girls, for Christ's sake. And then he shared the news of a link when Cora accused some policemen of assaulting her. But video evidence then surfaced showing that she was the one that slapped the policeman. He shared the link to that news to debunk all Cora's allegations. And as soon as Justin Dean did this, oh my god, some people started thinking and reasoning one and two. A lot of people jumped on the Justin Dean theory and held the exact same position. They were like, first and foremost, if you review and purview that video, <laughs> when the stranger came in, come on, Obodo Yibo is not a place where you just be, you know, raising conversations with people that don't know you. Everybody minds their business. But when this so-called person came in, Cora was like, hey, you scared me, you startled me, you did this to me. That the typical behavior of somebody who didn't stage that assault was to keep moving if somebody else comes in, not to start announcing, you scared me. They were like, it is very possible that Cora staged her own attack, especially as it is noted that few hours either before or few hours after that attack, Cora dropped a musical video on her channel. Let us not forget that before those days, Cora was getting 10 million views, 2 million views, 3 million views on YouTube, but these days, sometimes 20, 100, the views are dropping. They do not find it a coincidence that it was at the same period when she dropped a YouTube video that was not earning so much views that this attack happened. To them, it was planned. They were like, if somebody was really stabbed or attacked with acid, that person will not even know where phone is. That person will not start positioning phone to start saying, hey, look at me, or give me coke, let me wash my face, uh, perfect angle, everything on point. No. And when she saw her face, and she saw that there was no single dent, not even one scratch on her face, she still came online to start calling it acid attack, so blocks can carry it as acid attack, and the news will go viral, and then people will start searching for her. To them, this set of people, it was all a conspiracy to promote and project her new project. While some others strongly disagreed, they were like, despite Cora didn't come out with any serious wounds, it's very possible that it's because she wrestled the attacker. Cora is someone that walks out a lot, she's fit. So it's possible that she wrestled the attacker. They also contended, they have very strong points. It's like, this is UK. 
<laughs> this is not one country in Africa where you can just take something and go away. The UK authorities will do their due diligence and deep investigation. And if it is discovered that you raised this fake public outcry, there are stiff and stringent punishments for it. She will not dare to pull such a stunt in the UK because they would investigate it and the truth will be uncovered. They were like, instead of people to sympathize with this lady, they're coming up with one theory after the other, accusing her of being a liar. So what do you think, guys? Judging by these two arguments and watching that video yourself, do you think that this is just a publicity stunt by Cora to drive traffic and engagement to her YouTube channel and her new music? Or do you think that she was really attacked? Let us get your thoughts down in the comment section moving on to the next story <laughs> this our second story in the crazy week that was is one kind one kind the funny thing is that one set of people are jubilating and celebrating this development while the other sets are strongly condemning it we have never seen people so divided before on an issue so some videos back i gave a full account of who bob brisky was nigeria's number one transgender or cross-dresser i told the story of how he started and where he is now and especially how he flaunts his lifestyle how he flaunts himself with other men how he flaunts himself naked or half naked and how many moral policemen and women have expressed their distaste in his activities and wondered why the police why the authorities have not done anything to stop him they argued that he's corrupting the next generation he's being a bad example to the next generation projecting that kind of lifestyle is painting it as acceptable and these kind of behaviors are alien to our African society. While some other set of people were like, his life, his body, did he steal? Did he kill? Did he come to your house to snatch your husband or your wife? What is your business? What an adult chooses to do with his life and his body? We as a country, we have bigger problems and issues facing us. Face your front, mind your business. So these two arguments were going on on social media. I also let us know that Bob Risky was arrested, but not for these activities, not for being a transgender or not for cross-dressing. He was arrested for an entirely different offense, for the offense of mutilating the Naira and the offense of money laundering. So when he was brought before the court, when he was charged, the money laundering offense was struck off. Possibly there was no evidence to back it up. While the mutilating the Naira offense was sustained. Bob Whiskey pleaded guilty to mutilating the Naira. He was hence convicted and then the judge scheduled another date for sentencing. In the crazy week that was, that court that was hearing Bob Whiskey's case sat for his sentencing and very unexpectedly, to the shock of many, Bob Whiskey was sentenced to the maximum punishment of six months in prison without the option of fine. Well, if you did not know, according to Section 2021 of the Central Bank of Nigeria Act of 2007, Naira abuse includes spraying the Naira, stepping on the Naira, stamping the Naira or writing engraving on the Naira, selling the Naira, mutilating the Naira. Even flower bouquets, boom, 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 happy birthday to you, boom, 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 happy birthday to you, boom, boom, boom. All those sherere with money bouquet, they use money to make flower. Instead of the man to wire the money to your account and save you stress, they will wrap 100,000 Naira in 100, 100 Naira notes. You spend the whole night unboxing it. You spend the whole night unfolding it and ironing it. Awkward offense. That comes under this Naira offense. If you don't know, <laughs> don't say that Barisaneze has not told you. So if you plan doing money bouquet for your girlfriend on her birthday, I have warned you. And all these offenses are punishable with a six months imprisonment term or not ando or a fine of 50,000 naira or the boats. So from the facts of this case, from my experience, we were not expecting Bob Risky to get an imprisonment term without the option of fine. First, he is a first time offender. He has never been taken to court for any offense before. Secondly, he pleaded guilty. So he helped to shorten the trial and to save the resources of the states. He could as well have pleaded not guilty and then stretched the trial, placing the onus on the prosecution to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt because this is a criminal offense. So he saved the court all of that stress and money and throughout the duration of his trial, he has been of good conduct. From my experience, typically, a judge would give the lesser punishment. But to a lot of people's surprise, the judge still gave 
and imprisonment term. Since this judgment was made public, several reactions have trailed it. Some people on the one hand are like, oh please, we all know that this whole brouhaha, this whole arrest, this whole persecution, this whole judgment and sentencing has absolutely nothing to do with spraying of money. It is just vendetta. The government have been trying to find a way to pin that guy and teach him a lesson. And since as I explained that there is no law that prohibits transitioning from one gender to another or prohibits cross-dressing, the authorities know that they cannot charge him for an offense that does not exist. So the Kukuma <laughs> waited for him and pinned this one on him to teach him a lesson. They were like, now Bob will be put in a male cell. No access to his bleaching creams, no access to his hormonal drugs, no chance to accessing his routine beauty regimen and all of that. And don't forget that during the trial, Bob Whiskey was asked by the judge. <laughs> that was a very tricky question. Bob Whiskey was asked by the judge, are you a man or a woman? And he said that he's a man. So they're sending him to the male cell with all those honey sex starved male prisoners. Oh, oh my God. We cover Bob Whiskey's yash with the blood of Jesus Christ. They were like these same politicians and high ranking people in the society go to parties every day and spray money nobody is seeing it when the central government punished its citizens for no reason during the last election by hoarding the naira notes people were selling naira people were selling money even at weddings people are selling money every day nobody is arresting them it is arresting bob whiskey and sending him to jail that is the solution to all our financial crimes in nigeria okay? these said the people were very very offended saying that as we are laughing at bob whiskey for this injustice one day <laughs> it will touch everybody while on the other hand this other set of people were very happy they were like yes finally this will not only reset bob whiskey's head but will serve as a deterrent to many of him springing out by the day we need to sanitize our society we need to cleanse and purify our society we need our men to remain men and stop this madness on social media they were like yes let him serve his jail time by the time he comes out maybe his brain would have been reconfigured they were like as long as he was charged for a crime in commit crime maybe you know commit crime she in commit crime bam let him do his punishment they're held the nigerian government for nipping this madness in the board. Ha! <sighs> oh gawo. Wahala oti boju. Do let me know what you think down in the comment section. Do you believe that Bob Risky was purely witch hunted and punished for his lifestyle? Do you condemn the government for doing this? Or do you believe that he got exactly what he deserved? Let us get your thoughts about this story and the story of Cora Obidi down in the comment section so guys yes we have come to the end of today's video if you're new here you've seen my face for the first time or if you've been watching without subscribing don't forget to hit the subscribe button give this video a big thumbs up drop all your comments down in the comment section and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way don't also forget that our master class is still up and running so if you're interested in becoming a content creator or you're one already hoping to up your content creation game drive traffic to your page and experience an overall leveling up if you want to learn the true arts of storytelling do send a mail interested to Neza masterclass at gmail.com thank you so much guys again it's me your girl barista Neza, and this is Nezavale. i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye